Hey, 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 guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cooking with Kaylon Divine on Kaylon Divine Inspiration's YouTube channel. Today, we will be making our favorite homemade meatloaf, an all time favorite in pretty much every household. And today, Cooking with Kaylon is going to give you my version of meatloaf okay and we will be using our ground beef okay i'm not going to use this whole pack this is two and a half pounds but we're not going to use the whole thing we will use about half of this because i'm only cooking for two people but we will be meal prepping for two days so i will use about half of this um, pack okay so this is the okay so we will use about half of this pack to season our meatloaf we will be using one of my all-time favorites you've heard me talk about it our seasoning blend it is a lifesaver Seasoning blend is simply a combination of diced onions, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, and celery. It's very convenient. You can buy a large bag, keep it in the freezer, take it out whenever you need it. So that's what we will be sauteing um, a portion of this seasoning blend to go into our meatloaf. And we will be seasoning the seasoning blend with a little butter. And we are going to use two tablespoons of butter to saute our frozen seasoning. Pan, okay. Also in the meatloaf, we are going to put a dash of Louisiana hot sauce in there. Just a little bit. We don't want too much. We're just going to add a little hot sauce to give it a little kicking flavor. Okay, and we're also going to add a little of the Steakhouse Grill Marinade. And this will just help keep it moist. You can also use Worcestershire sauce, but I'm out of that. I used all of that um, in my last meal, so I haven't restocked on it. So we're going to use some of the Steakhouse Grill Marinade, only a little. Okay, also in this version of meatloaf, we will be using our breadcrumbs these are seasoned breadcrumbs okay seasoned breadcrumbs that we will be using and also i'm going to be adding to that a little of the seasoned croutons Okay, seasoned croutons. <clears throat> we will be adding some of those to the breadcrumbs. And I have already put them in the blender and gave them a good crumbling to make sure that they was crumbled up like the breadcrumbs. Okay, and I'm combining the two of these because my breadcrumbs were almost out. I didn't have enough to make the full cup that I needed for the meatloaf recipe. So, I said, hey, we will add some of these seasoned croutons, which is simply bread, just like the breadcrumbs. They're just in the form of a crouton for your salads. So, we just took some of those and put it in the blender and crumbled it up, and it looks just like the breadcrumbs. Okay, and here is our cup of croutons and seasoned breadcrumbs and you can see those give that a good shake so you can see the breadcrumbs already and we're also going to be seasoning today I like lots of flavors if you watch my other videos you know I'm all about the flavor and coloration so we will be adding some parsley and the breadcrumbs and the seasoned um, 
Q-tones. They both already have a little parsley in there, but we will be adding some more parsley. Okay, we will be adding Italian seasoning. We will also be adding some Creole seasoning. We will be adding onion powder because if you watch my other videos, you know I'm all about reducing the amount of salt intake. So we're using onion powder as a salt substitute. It is great for those individuals who would like to try to eliminate salt or reduce the amount of salt intake in your diet. Especially for those of you who may be battling with um, blood pressure problems, high blood pressure. Onion powder is a great salt substitute for you, okay? Also, if you want to reduce salt, you can do just a Google search to find out some more information about salt substitute. But I know onion powder is great. I learned that in a nutrition class that I took a couple of years back. And I've been using it ever since. Okay, we'll also be adding to our combination of spices some crushed rosemary. This is a very good herb to add into your diet. So we will give a couple dashes of rosemary in the recipe. And also for some extra added flavor, guys, I'm going to be adding the Cajun style all-purpose seasoning, spicy Louisiana classic seasoning. This is great. It has a combination of spices in it. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it's loaded with a um, combination of spices as well. And it's great for all types of um, meals. Okay, Delicious taste. You can use it for grilling, cooking in the oven, on the stove, whatever. It's wonderful. And we're also going to add a little black pepper. Not a whole lot because, again, we're using the Louisiana hot sauce as well. So we're just going to give it like a dash of the black pepper to add some more flavor. And we're also be adding a little garlic powder to the combination of spices that we have so okay guys say you have that's everything that i'm using today for our seasoning okay and we're also going to be adding to this mixture some beaten eggs okay so we're going to use two eggs i'm going to Crack these, put them in a bowl, and beat them up very well to make sure they're well blended with the egg yolks and the egg whites. And then we will add that to our mixture as well. Okay, guys. And to that also, we will be adding a little milk. All right, guys. We will be using a little of the Almond Breeze almond milk and it is the vanilla flavored almond breeze milk okay we're going to use a cup and a half of the almond breeze vanilla flavored milk okay so let's get going guys we've already prepped we have everything laid out that we need and i'm going to get ready to get cooking get my gloves and put them on so i can Thoroughly mix up the ground beef with the seasoning in the bowl and I will show you that as I'm doing it. Give you a little um, view of the mixing of the batter. Okay, so we will be using a cup of the combined seasoned breadcrumbs, seasoned croutons, two tablespoons of butter. We will be using a, about a half a cup or so of the seasoning blends we will saute that in the butter and then again we'll be using a cup and a half of the milk the beaten two eggs and we will use a combination of the seasoning with this you can use as much as little as seasoning as you want you know your taste and how much seasoning you like or the people in your household like so feel free to tweak it and adjust the measurements of the seasoning so i'm not going to give you an exact amount of the seasoning that i'm using because i will be doing it according to taste you can do two dashes three dashes or you can measure in teaspoons or tablespoons your preference but we're going to give it a generous amount we will be using at least a tablespoon of each of the season if not more because we want it to be loaded with flavor okay let's get cooking guys
Okay, we're just beating our eggs up, making sure that they're well blended. The egg whites and the egg yolks completely blended. Guys, that's well blended. Now we're gonna pour get our breadcrumb mixture in the bowl. So we have our breadcrumbs ready to go. They're already in the bowl. You can see the combination of seasonings in that. And then we're gonna add our seasoning blend that's sauteed in butter. Then we'll put our ground beef in there. Then we will add our eggs and our milk to that along with the extra seasoning that we will be using. Hey guys, our seasoning blend is sauteing in butter and I am using a cast iron skillet, the little small skillet to saute the seasoning blend. Okay, and it's just about ready and I already have the oven preheating. And I have my oven set to 375. Of course, we know that everyone ovens do vary in the heating. So adjust your oven temperature according to your um, oven. Because we know our ovens are different makes, models, types. So the temperature um, range on them may vary as far as how fast they heat up so you know your oven better than me so adjust your oven temperature um to a setting that's more appropriate for you to um, cook your meatloaf in okay, and then guys we're making the homemade old-fashioned meatloaf all right this is pretty much just about ready we don't want it to brown too much So I'm going to turn the oven, the um, stove off, and then we're going to transfer this to our brick room. All right, guys, we're ready to transfer our seasoning blend mixture, and we're just going to toss it over in here. Guys, that smells delicious. Okay, and we have our beaten eggs that we're going to get ready to add in a moment. Alright, let's get our ground beef. And remember, we're not using the whole pack. We only need about a pound to a pound and a half. And this is two and a half pounds, that pack that I showed you. So I'm going to use about half of that. Alright, guys, we have our seasoning breadcrumbs, croutons mixture, and our sauteed butter seasoning blend in there. Now we're going to add our ground beef. And we're only going to use half the pack. So let's just add our ground beef in there. That is about half that we have. Now we're going to add some seasoning to that. Alright, first let's add our butter. I'm um, excuse me, our eggs. We're adding our eggs that we've already beaten. Alright. Okay, 
right now we are going to add a dash of salt or hot sauce. Okay. Put a black pepper. Got a garlic powder. Cajun style. Rosemary, crushed rosemary, or you can use the whole rosemary and chop it up yourself. Have our onion powder. Our parsley. Italian seasoning. Creole seasoning. Alright guys, and we're going to add a small amount of the steakhouse marinade. Only a little. We're just adding this for moisture purposes to help the ground beef stay moist. And we're using it as a substitute for Worcestershire sauce. All right. Now we're going to mix that up very well. Put my other glove. And we're going to pour in our almond breeze vanilla flavored milk. And we have a cup. Well, a little over a cup. About one and a full cups of the milk. Grab my other glove. And we're going to mix this up thoroughly to make sure that it's well blended. And you can see the texture. So you have to make sure everything is well blended in there. Make sure that bread crumbs are mixed up good. Okay, we want to make sure this egg get mixed up in here good as well. Okay, guys. All right. So you can see the mixture is well mixed. You see all of the seasoning blended up in that mixture. The eggs is completely blended in with that mixed up in it. Everything is completely mixed up. Okay, now we're going to get a pan 
so that we can begin molding our meatloaf. Okay, and I will be cooking the meatloaf in an aluminum pan because it's easy cleanup. And a little trick that I have learned with the meatloaf to make it even easier to clean up is to use wax paper. Yes, you heard me correctly. Use the durable wax paper to line your pan, whether you're using an aluminum pan or um, porcelain pans steel pan whatever you metal pan whatever you decide to bake your meatloaf in line it with some wax paper and i promise you you will love it and it also helps to keep that meatloaf from browning too much under the bottom well sometimes depending on what kind of pan you use the meatloaf will tend to cook more under the bottom because it's um facing the heat and it will brown and kind of get hard sometimes but the wax paper eliminates that and i love it all right guys we're gonna um get to shaping this meatloaf okay get some of this off of my hands and take these gloves off Some people don't wear gloves. They just get in there and work it with their bare hands. But I prefer to use gloves. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Take that off. Okay, and this is the aluminum pan that I will be using. Okay. And we will be using the durable wax paper. Okay, durable wax paper. The white paper, the white paper. For those of you who don't know what white paper is, and we're going to measure it enough to cover the entire bottom of the pan. guys I've changed gloves we have clean gloves on all right now you saw me line the pan with the wax paper and of course you have paper that's hanging over the edges I know some of you may have been saying she got all that paper hanging over this and she's gonna put it in the oven but once you put your meatloaf in and the meatloaf will help keep the paper wax paper down 
but the excess paper on the ends you just go and trim that so nothing is hanging over down towards your rack in the oven okay that's how you do that guys for those of you who was questioning that all right now we're just gonna make two um loaves in our pan with our meat loaf okay guys We're going to like put it in their center and then we are just going to shape it. Okay. And we'll make another one over here. And just try to make sure that they're not touching. I like to make two loaves out of mine that make sure that it cooks through thoroughly. You don't want to have your ground beef packed too much because when it's pack too much it doesn't cook thoroughly on the inside the outside will be brown and cooked and beautiful but the inside will be also raw so make sure that you um if you're using a large portion like i am that you try to separate the ground beef into two loaves okay and we have just a little bit more we're going to add to that over here Okay, I am going to try to hold this up so that you can see the two loaves that I made. And I'm just trying to make sure I spread them out some in the pan. Like I said, we want it to cook thoroughly. I'm saying this wax paper will help keep the bottom of your meatloaf moist. pick my camera up so that I can show you that I don't want the meatloaf to shift in the pan. I'm just going to kind of mash that down to help spread it out some. And I reshape the ends of the sides of it. To this meal I will also be cooking some yellow rice some yellow squash some um, green beans and something that's called hopping John's <laughs> okay hopping John is just um, black eyed peas mixed with onions bell peppers and some tomatoes Okay, but I'm not going to show all of that on the video. We're just focusing on my famous meatloaf that is a favorite to so many people. Okay, so let's give you a closer look at our meatloaf. I'm just going to take my cameras, guys. So I'm sorry for the movement. So I can give you a better glimpse of it. Okay, and those are the two loaves that we made. You can see all of those onions and bell peppers. 
celery in that red bell pepper. Right, and we're going to put this in the oven. Again, I said I had my oven set on 375, but our ovens vary. You can preheat your oven from anywhere up to 350 degrees to 400, depending on your um, the heating elements in your oven. So I have mine on 375. A lot of people do 350, but like I say, oven temperatures, um, heating elements vary. So I'm doing the 375 and we're going to let our meatloaf cook for about an hour or until well done. And to help um, check whether it's completely done on the inside, you can use a toothpick or something to stick in there. If the toothpick comes out wet with the meat mystery, you know you need to cook it a little longer for the inside completely done. Or some people use a meat thermometer, whichever you prefer. Or you can use an old-fashioned fork. Stick it in there and check to see if anything comes out on the fork. Okay, so guys, there it goes. You see the meatloaf? Okay. Right now, we're going to stick this in the oven, guys. And I will be back to show you the finished product when the meatloaf is completely done. Thank you for watching the cooking episode of Kalon Divine Inspirations. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Kalon Divine Inspirations. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for your support. And we are currently still continuing our YouTube subscription promotion drawing for all new subscribers you have the opportunity to win cash prizes in a weekly drawing our newest subscriber that um won the cash prize is mariah green congratulations mariah and shout out to some of my um wonderful wonderful supporters they're always watching and sharing and commenting on my videos thank you to tanya Harris Reese and to Zenobia D. Hayward. Thank you guys for your support and thank you to the awesome, awesome Sharon Bowens for all of your support as well. And thank you for all the other subscribers. And please, guys, make sure you make your subscription public.